welcome. In this video, I'm going to introduce the topic of the electric field. Previous videos, we talked about the electric force. Force is something that is tangible, something measurable, something you can feel. A force, as you learned in physics one, is a push or a pull. But the question was raised, how is force transmitted through space? That is, when objects are not touching, is one object there to force on another? Well, <clears throat> one of the people involved in the early days of explaining this was Michael Faraday. There's a portrait of him taken from that classic book by Milliken and Gale. Faraday, <clears throat> One of the people who proposed the idea of the electric field. The field was something that surrounded every charged particle. And although two particles may not be touching, the field that extends from one particle touches another particle and vice versa. So let's look at this idea of the electric field. So <clears throat> the idea was that two particles may not touch, but they exert a force on one another because the electric field of one particle contacts the other particle. Therefore, the electric field causes the electric force. Here's the formula for Coulomb's law. This, you can take as a starting point, experimentally determined. Now we propose that a field surrounds every charged particle. That means in this formula, Q1 has an electric field, Q2 has an electric field. Let's see how to represent that. So this capital E stands for the electric field. The subscript one means it's a field from the charge number one, Q1. Here's the formula for the field. Ke, Q1 over R squared. What does R refer to? There's only one particle. R means the distance from that particle. In order to have a force, you must have two objects. But to have a field, <clears throat> you only need one object to have a field. And so R is simply the distance from that object. <clears throat> now, in a different context, imagine the Earth, which has a gravitational field. The point is, the field, the gravitational field of the Earth, extends out in space. R would be the distance from, say, the center of the Earth. <clears throat> there may not be another object near the Earth, but if something is flying by a meteor, it can be affected by the gravitational field of the Earth. The field is already there. That's the idea of the field. Now, the details of the electric field, the gravitational field, we're not going to go there. We're simply going to say that this field exists around every particle. Of course, now the context is electric field and charge. Um, now, this formula is going to be for this number. We'll get to the vector properties later. So, <clears throat> the field from charge one extends out in space <clears throat> indefinitely. Of course, it, as R gets bigger, the field gets smaller. If R is smaller, the field is bigger. So the force is given by, for the, the force that, that charge one has on charge two, is the field of charge one, E sub one, times Q2. Now, it's pretty simple. If you look at the algebra, 
Q2 times E1 will give you the formula for Coulomb's law. We know <clears throat> Coulomb's law is correct. It's experimental. So <clears throat> we propose this idea of the field and <clears throat> it clearly works because if we say F sub B equals Q2 times E1, we get the right formula. So that's how charge one exerts a force on charge two. What about the other way around? Well, we also say that charge two has a field E sub two given by the formula Ke Q2 over R squared. Again, R would be the distance from charge two. If you have two charges, you can say that's the distance between the two. But for one charge, it's simply, well, how far am I from that charge? Now, if we say, what is the force that charge two exerts on? One, we write it like this. Q1 times E2. Again, if you do some very simple algebra, you'll see you get the right formula for Coulomb's law. That's the basic idea of the electric field. <clears throat> now, force is a vector, charge is a number, so field must also be a vector for these expressions to be true. We'll come to that. So, <clears throat> how do we determine the, electric, the direction of the electric field? Well, if we write this as a vector, we see the electric force vector equals Q times the electric field vector. Q is simply a number. If Q is positive, it means you're taking the electric field vector multiplying by a positive number. That positive number will not change the direction of the vector. It will change the length of the vector. So we conclude that F sub B may have a different length than the electric field. It will, but if Q is positive, F sub B and the electric field will have the same direction. If the charge is negative, then the force will be in the direction opposite the electric field. Therefore, our first thing we want to do is say, what does the electric field look like? Well, if you find the direction of force on a positive charge, you will find the direction of the field. By knowing the direction of the field at different points in space, you'll know what the field looks like. That's the approach we're going to take. So the first thing we ask, what does the electric field look like in the vicinity of a positive charge? There's our positive charge. We imagine we took another charge, just a test charge. We're not trying to calculate a force or whatever. We just want to see, use this other charge as a probe of what the field looks like near this positive charge. So suppose we, at plus sign in the upper right, we put a, a test charge there. What is the direction of the force? <clears throat> it's going to be repelled from this positive charge. Therefore, that must be the direction of the field at that point. We put the charge here, it's repelled. We put the charge here, it's repelled. We put it here, it's repelled. Here, repelled. Put it here gets repelled. So the positive charge is going to repel <clears throat> another positive charge. Therefore, if we put our charge of interest in the center, we put a test charge around it, we find out that the field points outward from a positive charge. Go in any direction you want to, it's going to point outward. Now, we use a term, we say the positive charge appears to be a source of electric field. In other words, <clears throat> the field is a vector, 
we draw it as an arrow. <clears throat> we see arrows coming outward from the positive charge. Therefore, it looks as though the field is starting at the positive charge, it's moving outward. So we can describe the positive charge saying it looks like a source of electric field. It points outward. Appearance of the field run a negative charge. Well, once again, we start with a negative charge. We say, we know for a positive charge, the force and field have the same direction. Therefore, we simply take our test charge and put it there it's in the upper right. The positive charge will be attracted to the negative. We move it, it's attracted to the negative. Move it, it's attracted to the negative. Move it, it's attracted to the negative. Move it, attracted, attracted. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so what do we conclude? Well, force and field have the same direction for positive charge. Therefore, the field points inward toward a negative charge. It's a vector. We draw it as an arrow. It points inward. Therefore, the term we use, we say the negative charge appears to be a sink of electric field. The field appears to flow into it. A sink, just like your kitchen sink, the water flows into it, goes down the drain. That's how we envision the, the field. We have the equation given earlier. K sub E times Q over R squared for the strength of the field as a distance from a charge. With this understanding, with relating force and field, we know what the appearance of the field is out from a positive into a negative. What happens if you have more than one charge? Well, <clears throat> I'm only going to use two here to illustrate, two at a time. But if you have many charges, you simply sum the field from, from each charge. You sum up all the fields. So if we start on the left, I've got two positive charges. and for a placeholder, I typically use a little triangle. The triangle represents nothing. There's nothing there. I just use it to represent a point in space where I want to know what's going on. So I want to know, I've got two positive charges. What would the electric field look like where that little triangle is sitting? Well, I pretend, I'm just pretending that I have my little bitty positive test charge. So this, there's nothing there. This is a pretend. I pretend I put a positive charge. If I do that, I would say that positive charge is repelled by the positive one below it. That's the force. And I would say the one to the left repels it to the right. Really, and, and the two positive charges I started, I don't really care whether they repel one another. I'm not asking that. I'm only asking about what the field is at some point in the vicinity of those two charges. Well, if I have one component pointing up, one to the right, I would conclude the resultant vector will be a sum of those two electric field is pointing to the upper right. Now, we're not quantifying anything at this point. We can use the equation in a later video to quantify. For now, we just want to know what does it look like. So it would look like that, pointing to the upper right. Now, to the right, I have a negative charge and a positive charge. Again, I don't care whether those two charges attract, repel, whatever. I'm interested in what the field looks like in the vicinity of those two charges. So I'll put my triangle. Again, that simply represents a region of space. The pretend part, I'm not really putting something there. I'm pretending I put a positive charge. And say, so what would happen? 
that positive charge, the force from that lower positive would repel it upward. What about the negative charge? Well, it would be attracted to that charge. Therefore, those are the forces. We want to get the idea of the direction. The electric field, the resultant vector from those two vectors would be to the upper left. Again, I'm not quantifying. I'm <clears throat> yeah, if you do Pythagorean theorem or what, it may not look right. I'm just saying for this case, the field would point to the upper left. The details of quantifying it, we'll do another video with the equations. Okay. To the electric field, I thank you for listening, watching all the way to the end.